And hello good people of the internet, it is I, Tommy Kelly, and this is Adventures in Woo And in this episode, I want to talk a bit about whether people can actually change or not, or whether we're just kind of stuck with who we are. So welcome back to Ravensdale Forest, and once again we're in the Standing Stones, in the Stone Circle. Um, I have to start once again with an apology. I have been walking about, I have been uh, going up and down the different trails and stuff. So I am, as always, a bit sweaty and uh, slightly out of breath. I was trying to do this as a walk and talk and uh, I'm just not fit to do that. I just like, it's like, <sighs> after about five seconds. Now it is hard to walk and talk. It's not just that I'm 42 in a week and not fit. That's my excuse anyway. Anyway, half from all that. Basically, over the last while, I've been kind of thinking about this whole notion of change, of transformation, of, you know, the kind of trying to become something greater, if you want. And if my whole notion of magic was kind of along that kind of way of transformation rather than getting the things. I'm all, all for the things, if I, as, as I said before, but my focus has never been on getting the things. It's always, always been on trying to be bigger and better and closer and more, you know, a better person, I suppose, or closer to your higher self, or, you know, kind of coming from that whole train of thought that the, the, the world is kind of a school or a learning place and that you have to, you know, you're trying to uh, educate yourself through these experiences to become the master within, you know, the kind of ascended master thing that you have in theosophy and all of those things. I'm steadily coming to the kind of thing that that's kind of bullshit and that um, it's not about that. And it's not about trying to, you know, because that comes from a kind of an idea, which I think is a flawed idea, uh, particularly in the way I approach it, that there's something kind of less about you or wrong about you that you have to kind of refine or become better at and become, you know, the actual thing you are. And that's kind of, in a sense, it's, it's victim blaming, not victim blaming, it's kind of, it's like, it's putting you in a position where you're not okay. You know that you're not good you're not uh, worthy you're not you're, you're just it's like that alchemical thing that uh, and it's kind of put in a uh, judo judoski's whatever way that's pronounced that guy who did uh, the holy mountain and all those other things and um, says that you know you are shit but you can become gold and i'm having issue with all of that because i spent too long thinking i'm shit and that then prizes the gold and you know i'm i don't think that's healthy i don't think that's wise i don't think that's a good kind of starting point for any of this stuff and um, kind of it's, it's almost like the original sin thing you're a piece of shit and you know but if you pray hard enough and if you're you know um if you forgiveness and if you ask for forgiveness enough and if you do all the good works and your all of these things you know the catholic fucking stuff that's in me and you know societal stuff as well you know you must work you know you must be a good citizen and maybe one day you'll be okay you know and you'll be acceptable to the world and i'm coming to see how nasty and terrible that is and soul destroying that kind of outlook and it's it's been a fundamental kind of hum as I say underneath all of my kind of it's it's informed nearly all who I am and every way that I approach the world along with other stuff that is you know I've got wrong and been flawed about and all that kind of stuff but it's definitely had that that's how I approach the world and that there's something fundamentally wrong with me in particular more than other people that's a different conversation but um and that I'm not worthy until I have done all of these things that you're meant to have done to become okay, you know, to become the ascended master, become worthy, you know, to become worthy of the promises of Christ, as they say in the, the Catholic Mass, or whatever it is. And recently I've been thinking about this, uh, how that kind of, you know, manifests in the world. And one of the things is, last year on my birthday was the last time I drank for any considerable kind of amount, drank alcohol. Not strictly true because I had a couple of glasses of wine at Christmas, which may have been a couple of bottles of wine. But in, in a kind of a, you know, a whole, if you look at it from a wider perspective, it's a whole year, pretty much since I drank in the way I used to. And I kind of was started that, well not kind of, I absolutely started that because my wife was pregnant and was about to give birth and I didn't want to be, you know, really drunk trying to drive her to the hospital uh, in the middle of the night or whatever it was. So it was just kind of, you know, practical not to do it. And then as it went on, when the baby arrived, it was kind of practical not to do it because you don't want to be dealing with a baby with either being drunk or with a hangover. That's not wise. 
and uh, so then it kind of continued and then I remember thinking about Alan Chapman uh, who had from his advanced magic for beginners he wrote that and he has a new website Magica um, who I'm quite a fan of his Baptist head was where I came across him first originally the Baptist Head uh, website. But anyway, he talks about that he went off drink alcohol for a year and he found it a hugely satisfying experience where he got more clarity, he felt fitter, he felt better mentally, his magic worked better, and perhaps I'm paraphrasing and adding to it, but it was he genuinely seemed to have a kind of a a very positive response to the whole giving up alcohol for a while. Now I don't know much alcohol he was drinking in the first place, but I had to assume it was either equal or less than mine, because I'm Irish and we've normalised, you know being absolutely drunk out of your head here it's not it's not like we're all all Irish people are alcoholics in any other society other than our own where we're just grand but there's this kind of thing where we have um well what sort of a night did you have last night ah didn't get up to much only had about eight or nine pints I've had that conversation many times so I thought that after having given it up for a year that I would have some kind of not necessarily an epiphany but something would change and it didn't. Now, you know, I'm not uh, fundamentally a different person. I'm not, I haven't noticed any huge benefit. I was hoping that I would get kind of a better handle on my depressive uh, periods. I thought that, that would, the drink might have been a catalyst for an awful lot of that. My wife certainly did, that she thought that when I, when I was drinking that it would lead to periods of, you know, black dogness coming around or depression or whatever. And while the initial hangover stuff did, you know, yeah, I definitely dipped. Um, my chemicals definitely dipped, uh, uh, you know, from hangovers or whatever, and I, I would feel very, almost suicidal in a sense, the next day, that, that low or whatever, from drinking, if I had a heavy session or whatever. But I thought that if I took that out of the equation, that I would have more periods where I would be up or normal than down. You know, when you take that kind of alcohol being a depressive, when you take that out of the equation, that it would, you know, go, oh, all of this wasn't, I wasn't really depressed or sad <laughs> or fucked with the world. I was uh, just drinking too much. And that didn't happen because this year has been as kind of hard on me mentally as any year, other than I wasn't even getting up of, uh, you know, drinking or whatever. So, the calorie element of it, sure, I, I think there's been some sort of um, benefit to that, but I've, you know, we're very restrictive in calories since Christmas hovering between 1300 and 1400 calories a day and doing lots of fasting and stuff like that so I can't just point to the alcohol for that and I have lost some weight uh, of course not a huge amount of weight or anything I think from Christmas a stone and a half or what's that in pounds 14, 7, 20 pounds something like that which is not an awful lot like really considering the amount I was kind of getting out um, and the amount I was eating and the, the, you know a lot less drink and all of those type of things but that's my diet thing is like, that's just, you know, that's an ongoing thing. Don't give me diet advice, please. I've had enough. <laughs> I've had enough of people's diet advice. I know your heart's in the right place, but I'm okay. I'm, I'll, you know, go check out my uh, weight loss for the soul uh, blog post or whatever, and you'll see why I'm very kind of <laughs> um, over that whole, you know, uh, advice. That's just... It's, it's too much. People demand that their way is true and all these things. Anyway, tangent. So this got me more thinking about all of these things, about change. And when I was thinking about Reiki and all that kind of stuff, and I talked about it in my kind of, the first video when I was going into Reiki, was that when I originally did Reiki in my early 20s, I was hoping for this huge change in my life. That it would fundamentally change me and I'd have a better out outlook, I'd have massive insights, and I'd approach the world in a different way. And of course that didn't happen and it didn't really happen again with uh, the Reiki sessions I did recently and while there was big insights or maybe insights towards like while stuff happened and stuff came up um, I'm still who I am I've not nothing has changed my moods hasn't changed my outlooks haven't fundamentally changed um, or at least that's how it feels I do have a rebuttal to this but I, I'll, I'll get to that a while ago when I was ten, telling a friend of mine who I won't say whose name it is because it's not fair um, it's his you know it's not my story to tell, but I can tell it kind of in a way. And um, when I was telling him that, uh, I, you know, we were pregnant, we're going to have a baby, and he was saying that, um, I hate when you think there's people standing behind. <laughs> and he was saying that um, the thing to remember, or the thing that he found that was most interesting about it was that you think you're going to be a different person when this happens, or that it's going to change you in some way or whatever, but when it happens, you're just still you, 
in that circumstance. And he's saying even when his mother died, and his mother died of um, cancer and young and stuff like that, um, that he was still what he found was kind of his one of his takeaways, obviously from was that he was still him within this, and that it hadn't fundamentally changed. And I kind of I didn't really understand that. Like I obviously intellectually under, understood that. So you would think when you have something like a baby, which is a huge thing, like it's a massive magical change to the world, um, and your life will never be the same again. But you're still you within it, unmoved, unchanged, in many ways, you know. And it's not that. Yeah, hold on till I get rid of this spider. Move it. Thank you. So there's like that kind of element to it where you're just kind of going. You know, what's the point in the sense of all of these things? If magic is transformative, or if life is meant to be transformative, and you're not really transforming. Um, is that just the wrong outlook on all of these things? And Spud, the guy we did, RV in Mud, would uh, certainly say that's the wrong outlook. That don't be thinking that way. That's um, that's not, you know, that's not kind of conducive to number one good health or a kind of good to a positive outlook or whatever. That you shouldn't think in those ways. But my rebuttal to all of it is this thing of when I learned photography two years ago. Uh, it's coming up to just two years since I took up photography and I knew nothing about photography I knew nothing about aperture, about ISO, about cameras, about, you know, any of these things and uh, now I do and I know it all and I can't find a part, like when I think about it I don't really feel that there was ever a time when I didn't know it that it's become kind of part of me and who I am Come back from to the beginning and kind of in, in a sense and it's like that I can kind of separate the learning from where I am now and it's and it's also a thing of that say you're on a diet or you're you know you're a kid and you're growing up but it's only when people have been away from you and then come and go oh you've lost an awful lot of weight and you haven't noticed it really yourself so much because you've been living day to day with the gradual changes and you haven't, you know, when you're a kid, you, you don't realise you're growing up and, and all of those different things. Like, I remember a guy saying to me when I was a teenager, he goes, when, when did your voice break? And I went, I have no idea. I can't remember it happening. You know, it didn't. But he, he had recognised from when I was like this to when I was like this. So, but my point there is that we probably do constantly evolve and change, but it's just that we don't realise that it's happening. I'm certainly not the person, when I look back, I'm not the person I was, at, I was at 20, at all. And I feel that in the last like 10 years that my kind of um, mind or my worldview has expanded so dramatically, like unbelievably, that it's got way more complicated than it was and way more interesting and way more expansive than I thought the world was when I was, say, in my 20s, in my late 20s, whatever. And so it's probably unfair of me to say that giving up drink for a year has had no impact on me whatsoever because I would need to be standing right beside the person who I was this time last year and have a chat with him and see you know has his outlook changed has things you know has it had an impact in, in any other ways let's get his bloods done and let's do my bloods now and see if there's you know an improvement all of these things but because it's a gradual change it's hard to quantify or it's hard to kind of point at or it's hard to know if it actually happened or whatever but um it's still I think going into the approach of doing all of this stuff as trying to have one huge transform transformative experience is probably going down the wrong alleyway because I don't think it works like that. even if you go through a tremendous unbelievable trauma or devastating life kind of situation whatever as my friend would have said you're that's you're still you within that and you don't you can, might come out a bit bruised and battered and a bit sadder or happier or whatever it is but you're still you and you're not going to change fundamentally and it might be that you have but you just you're not going to realize it because the i that is within you the witness or whatever is um is evolving along the ways and it always seems to be intact and so it's hard to notice the changes within you so ultimately i don't know that's that's my answer is is it possible for people to change fundamentally it probably is so I noticed certain things in me that I have got rid of completely. I had a very uh, a jealousy issue, like a jealousy streak kind of thing that's, you know, it's partly the sort of ancestral element to that as well. But I got rid of that completely in my late 20s. Just, you know, I just went, good luck to that. I don't want that anymore. It, it, it definitely didn't feel 
part of my story or who didn't want it part of my story anymore. So it's gone. Every now and again it slightly raises its head, but I think it's just kind of a normal <laughs> human response to certain things. That sometimes you are going to get jealous about things or envious. Envy seems a better emotion than jealousy because it makes you want to do stuff. Um, Jealousy, just, just I did like I had to work this out. But jealousy is that you you feel that someone has something that belongs to you, or envy is that you know it doesn't belong to you, but you wish you had it. So there's kind of a, a better kind of push, I think, a motivation that you get from envy, where you'll only get kind of bitterness from jealousy. So it's a useless, a useless kind of emotion, although it's there for a reason. So to wrap this all up, change possibly. But you're not going to notice it because it's going to happen gradual and it's you're going to like it diet not realize it yourself because you're with yourself every day and will probably other people will recognize it more and i think looking for instant changes or dramatic life transformations even through magic or even say doing something like i know a heroic dose of mushrooms or stuff like that or you have magic mushrooms or whatever it's probably not going to have the impact on me in the way that I wanted it to or whatever. And I think thinking that is only gonna lead yourself to feeling that you're uh, failing or that you're not along these way. And then couple that with what I said at the beginning, which is that if you're approaching life as a kind of a learning experience or to, uh, a becoming of an acceptable person, you know, to be blessed or to be, you know, kind of um, acceptable to God or whatever that thing I was talking about that you have to, you know, you're, you're a piece of shit and you have to become the gold. And if you're looking for, you know, this instant kind of fix to become the gold, you're going to have a bad time. And I think I've been having a bad time because of that kind of thought and that kind of approach and stuff like that. So, as always, this would be an ongoing kind of thought in my head. And it's just thought it'd be interesting to bash around my ideas around this. Uh, so I'm open to hear what you all think about all that. Is change possible? Is dramatic change possible? Is overnight change possible? Are you always going to be fundamentally you? And can you realise that there is change happening in the way that I talked about? That un unless, you know, are other people going to see it more than you're going to see it? Because you're always going to think that's who you were. I always think I knew about photography. Even though intellectually, of course, I don't. But there's part of me that goes, well, how would... I always knew about ISO, but I didn't. Or I always knew how to use Photoshop, but I didn't. Or I always, you know, YouTube was always about, but it wasn't. You know, all of these things. So, before I ramble any further, good people of the internet, until our next adventure, be well.